The Misfit of Demon King Academy tells the story of Demon King Anos Valdegote. It is said, 2,000 years ago, the figure of a demon king who was greatly feared destroyed the human kingdom, burned the spirit forest to dust, and also destroyed the gods. He killed anyone who got in his way and fought wars for hundreds of years. Until finally one day, Anos felt bored with war because he kept presenting the same suffering repeatedly. The demon king wanted peace so that the entire race would no longer have to go to war. For that, he summoned Hero Kanon, a hero of the human race who is also the enemy of the entire demon race to come to his castle in Delzigate. Not only Kanon but the demon king Anos also invited the great spirit Reno and the creation god Militia to come. Anos told them that he would turn into a magic wall separating each race so they could no longer interact, so the war will end soon. Although initially disbelieving, Kanon finally agreed to the proposal. Anos then added that although he would later die and turn into magic, he didn't just disappear because he will be reincarnated exactly 2,000 years from now. Before disappearing, Anos created seven elder demon emperors from his own blood who later served to lead the demon race as well as to find a place where he could be reincarnated. Then, all the representatives of the races used their magical abilities to turn Anos into the magic that became the dividing wall of each race. Then Anos died. 2,000 years later, a baby boy was born to a husband and wife couple Isabella and Gusta. When Gusta was about to name the baby, suddenly the baby immediately spoke the name of Anos Valdegod. Anos As expected, the baby was the reincarnation of the demon king Anos Valdegod who lived 2,000 years ago. Shortly after birth, Anos used the magic power he already possessed to accelerate the growth of his body. So when he was only one month old, he already had a body like a teenage boy. Anos also already has various abilities, including using a sword. Isabella and Gusta were happy with Anos's rapid growth. Scenes change, and shows Demon King Delzigade's castle turning into an academy. The academy's goal is to seek the reincarnation of the Demon King. For that, they sent invitations to all children with magical abilities from all races to come to school at the academy. Anos was the one who received an invitation from the Demon King Academy. Isabella and Gusta drove Anos to school and excitedly bid him farewell. At the school gate, Anos helped retrieve a letter from a female student named Misha Necron that had fallen. At that time, the two of them became acquainted and became close after realizing that their parents bid farewell with such great enthusiasm. When they were about to enter the academy, a male student named Zeppas Indu made fun of Anos and Misha. However, Anos and Misha chose to ignore Zeppas, which made him very angry. Zeppas was apparently not a student of an ordinary race. He comes from a race of noble descent which makes him so arrogant. After being ignored by Anos and Misha, Zeppas continued to annoy them and used magic to throw fire at the two. Fortunately, Anos also has a magic ability that is no less great so he easily extinguishes Zeppas' fire and then forces him to kneel. Zeppas was surprised that Anos used magic power which forced him to obey orders, but he couldn't do anything to retaliate. After that, Anos and Misha return from the school gate to enter the academy building and take the entrance exam. One form of the test in the entrance exam is that prospective students have to face each other and fight each other. Incidentally, Anos had to face Zeppas, who apparently had prepared himself by wearing an anti-magic armor. But apparently the armor doesn't affect Anos' strength and he easily kills and resurrects Zeppas many times until he surrenders. Anos passed the first test and prepared to go through the second test, which measured the magic power possessed. In the third test, Anos was tested with several questions. One of them mentioned what the Demon King's name was. After taking the exam, Anos invites Misha to come to his house, where he explains that he uses magic to grow up quickly. In the evening, he drove Misha home. The next day, Anos came back to the academy to see the exam results. Even though Anos was the reincarnation of the Demon King in his current life, he was a hybrid of the human race and the demon race, so at the Demon King Academy, he received a white uniform. On the other hand, the other disciples of the noble race were given black uniforms. Anos got the uniform color, which indirectly made him last in line at the academy. Anos also earned the nickname Fudeki Gosha, which meant he was unfit to become a demon king. Anos was surprised by the nickname he got so he asked Misha what the name of the demon king was, and Misha replied that the name of the demon king was Avos Dilhavia. Apparently, after 2000 years had passed, the history of the demon king had been changed and misinterpreted. Despite knowing that he is not considered a reincarnation of the Demon King, Anos is determined to show his abilities. Time passed, and the first class at Demon King Academy was taught by Emilia Ludowell, a teacher who greatly revered the descendants of the noble race. Emilia assigned them to form a team and learn a magic power. 
Unfortunately, no one wanted to join the Anno's team. So Anno's team consisted of only himself and Misha, who also got a white uniform. At that moment, another female student in a black uniform approached Anno's and Misha. The schoolgirl was Sasha Necron, Misha's twin sister and a direct descendant of Ivis Necron, one of the seven elder demon emperors. Not only comes from a noble race, but Sasha also gets the nickname Witch of Destruction because she has eyes with destructive power or demon eyes of destruction. Long story short, Sasha invites Anos to change teams so that Misha is alone and has no one on her team. However, Anos refused the invitation, which immediately made Sasha angry and challenged Anos to a duel in a team fight. Anos thoughtlessly accepted the challenge, and in the next team battle, Anos' team had to fight Sasha's team which consisted of more students of noble descent. Despite being outnumbered and underestimated because of their race status, Anos could trounce Sasha. He then invited Sasha to join his team. Sasha initially refuses, but she finally agrees after Anos seduces her and says she has gorgeous demon eyes of destruction. Like the previous day, Anos invited Sasha and Misha to come to his house this time. While at Anos' house, Sasha and Misha, who turned out to have a bad relationship were able to make up again. When escorting them back home, Sasha thanked Anos for making her reconcile with Misha. Then she kissed Anos as an expression of gratitude. The scene changes and shows Ivis Necron, one of the elder demon emperors currently leading the Demon King Academy. Even though the real Anos created Ivis as well as the other elder demon emperors, Ivis actually remembered his creator's name as Avos Dilhavia, the fake demon king. On that same day, the students received a new test to find magic items in Delzigade Castle. While searching the castle, Misha asks Anos what she should give Sasha on her birthday tomorrow. Because he used to live in Delzigade Castle, Anos easily found the magic item storage room. In the room, he found his magic-powered suit called the Phoenix Robe and a magic scepter. Remembering Misha's previous question, Anos then gave a Phoenix Robe to Misha to give as a birthday present for Sasha. Meanwhile later, Anos will hand over the magic scepter as a magic item in this exam, which guarantees he will get the highest score. Sasha came to the storage room soon after, and Misha gave a phoenix robe for her as her birthday present. After getting the gift, Sasha asked Anos to come out of the room so she could try on the phoenix robe outfit. But after Anos had waited outside the room for some time, he started to feel suspicious because there was no sound inside the room. Not long after, Anos broke into the room and saw Misha was already injured with a knife stabbed in her chest. Seeing this, Anos immediately confronted and attacked Sasha, who at that moment seemed to want to steal Anos' magic scepter. The fight between them ensued, and Anos again managed to defeat Sasha. During the fight, Anos healed Misha's wounds so that she would not die. When Anos had managed to corner Sasha, Misha who realized, instead asked him to let go of her twin sister. Finally, Sasha fled with the phoenix robe and magic scepter. After that incident, Misha then revealed a secret to Anos. She explains that in fact, her current existence does not exist. Misha is just a magical entity, and by the time Sasha turns 15 tomorrow, she will merge into Sasha. So, in essence, tomorrow, Misha will disappear and become a magic power within Sasha. This is because when they were still in the form of a fetus in the womb, Ivis separated the fetus into two entities, where one of them is a magical entity. Knowing the secret and realizing that Misha would disappear soon, Anos hugged her. Then Misha expressed her last wish before she disappeared to be able to make up with Sasha. Finally, Anos and Misha they came to Sasha but she refused to reconcile with Misha. Sasha even challenges Anos to a fight where if he manages to control and imitate her magic formula, then that's when Sasha will want to make up with Misha. Of course in the end Anos could easily imitate and even control the magic formulas created by Sasha. Even without Anos knowing, the essence of the magic formula is so that Misha does not disappear despite the risk that Sasha will actually die. It's just that the condition for the magic to work is that Misha must hate Sasha. It was already revealed that Sasha had deliberately instilled hatred to save her twin sister even if she had to sacrifice herself. But apparently, even though Anos managed to imitate and control the magic formula, the conditions were not met. Because even though Sasha had been bad to her all this time, Misha never hated her. This makes Anos intend to help them by bringing Misha and Sasha back to the past and separating their fetus into two humans to be reborn as complete twins. For the magic to work, Anos first asked them to believe that the real demon king was him, Anos Valdegod not Avos Dilhavia. When Anos was preparing to activate magic, Ivis suddenly came and stabbed him in the chest. Anos was injured, though he easily healed himself and attacked Ivis back. Ivis apparently intends to stop their attempt to return to the past, and at that time, he is being possessed by Yugo Laravias, the guardian god of time. 
Hugo's job is to prevent anyone from returning to the past, including Anos. Sasha and Misha, who initially weren't so sure Anos was the Demon King, actually believed when they saw the fight between Anos and Hugo, so the magic to return to the past can be activated. Anos then managed to defeat Hugo by using Venice de Noah, a sword that can destroy everything in the world. The defeat not only killed Hugo, but also Ivis's body, but Anos brought him back to life, and at the same time, brought back Ivis memories that were previously affected by Avos Dilhavia's magic. Ivis recognized Anos as the Demon King, and Anos ordered him to investigate Avos Dilhavia and the other six elder demon emperors. Meanwhile, Sasha and Misha managed to return to the past and were born as complete twins. When they returned to the present, Anos asked them to hurry because he intended to give up the scepter to get a perfect score in this exam. Before that, because the day had changed and it's Misha's birthday, Anos gave a gift of a magic ring called Ice Lipid that could increase her strength. The scene moves to a flashback to 2000 years ago, when there was a war against a water spirit in the form of a dragon. One of Anos' men, Shin Reglia, asked permission to defeat the enemy, so Anos challenged him to defeat the water spirit with just one attack. If Shin succeeds, Anos will grant all his wishes. It was easy to predict. Shin managed to defeat the water spirit with just one attack with his sword and Anos then granted his request to be reincarnated. Then Kanon came, and Anos ordered Shin to find Reno. The reason is that even though Anos' strength is tremendous, he can't beat Kanon who has seven roots which become his core strengths. When Anos managed to defeat one of the core strengths, the other six would heal the lost one. Back in the present, Emilia announces that Anno's team still didn't manage to get a perfect score in yesterday's test because the magic scepter he gave was stolen by someone. Just then, a female student, Misa Elirogu, suddenly stood up and said Emilia's decision was unfair. Moreover, not long after, Anno's managed to get back the magic scepter which was apparently stolen by one of their classmates. On the other hand, it is revealed that Misa is a member of the Unitarians, a group that has always believed that Anno's was the real Demon King. Misa, who is a hybrid of the demon and spirit races, also opposes the discrimination that has been practiced by the noble race. She revealed to Anos that during this time, she never spoke again with her father, who was a member of the royalist group. Long story short, they undergo the next test where they have to draw a sword. Later on, whoever can pull out the sword will be trained by two special teachers, Gaios Anzeim and Idol Anzeo who are part of the elder demon emperors. Anos manages to pull out one of the swords, and he explains to Misha that he just can't draw a sword called Evan's Mana in this world. As previously stated, Anos will be trained directly by the two teachers. But at that moment, another student named Leigh Glonsley showed he had also managed to pull out the sword. Leigh is apparently known by the nickname Sword Master, where he can master any sword in this world. For that, they will both be specially trained. But before the training started, the attacks from Anos and Leigh actually knocked out Gaios and Edol. Anos then felt that Lei had not used all the abilities he had. The incident during training that day made Lei ask to join Anos' team, but Anos refused. Lei, who insists on joining, finally makes Anos challenge him to a fight. Anos asked Lei to join the Unitarian team and fight Anos' team in tomorrow's competency test. Misha and Sasha beat the Unitarian team on the exam day, including Misa. Meanwhile, Anos and Lei were still fighting. Their fight was so heated that they destroyed the forest and caused an earthquake. Even though Anos finally managed to beat Lei, he was happy to get a balanced opponent. Besides that, Anos also felt that he knew Lei from his previous life. Even though Lei lost, Anos still accepted him and Misa to join his team. After school, Anos invited his team to come to his house. When having dinner together, Isabella recounts the times when she was pregnant. At that time, Isabella's fetus was so weak that she prayed to all the gods, spirits, and even the devil, to safely giving birth to her child. For the record, Isabella is from the human race, so it's not natural to pray to all races' gods. Finally, the baby was able to live because the soul of Anos entered the fetus. In short, Isabella and Gusta's babies actually died before they were born, but Anos used the baby as a vessel to be reincarnated. The next day, Amelia chose Anos and Lei to participate in the sword tournament. Anos realized that this was Avos Dilhavia's trap. During the lunch break, one of the elder demon emperors, Melhaes Boron, came to Anos and said even though his memory had been erased, he was sure that Anos was the Demon King. Long story short, before the competition started, Anos was reluctant to join to not fall into Avo's trap. When he was not present, even though his name had been called to start the fight, the classmates who were in the audience started making fun of Anos. Isabella, who was also watching the competition, felt disapproved and began to defend Anos. On the other hand, 
Gusta gave him a demon sword that he made himself because Anno's reason that he didn't want to fight because he didn't have a sword. For this reason, Anno's finally joined the fight to bring victory to Isabella and Gusta. In the fight, Anno's faced Krut Ludowell. Just like Amelia's man, Anno's easily defeated Kurt. And on the other hand, Lei also won the fight against his opponent. At that time, it was also announced that Lei had joined the organization of the nobility the royalists. This makes Anno suspicious so he confronts Lei. And after a while of arguing with each other, Anno's learns that Lei is under threat, and his mother Shayla is being held hostage. Anno's knew this after seeing the contract magic that bound the root in Lei. If Lei does not obey the orders given, then he will die. Anno's finally decided to go to Shayla who was sick at the time. Meanwhile, he entrusted the demon sword Gusta made to Isabella. When he meets Shayla, Anos asks Misa who comes with him to give spirit powers to heal her. On the other hand, Emilia doesn't accept Kurt's defeat and tries to snatch the demon sword from Isabella. Fortunately at that time, there was a Unitarian team who banded together to protect Isabella. But of course Emilia managed to beat the Unitarians and was about to attack Isabella when Anos suddenly arrived. Seeing Isabella injured by Amelia's attack, Anos was furious and brought Amelia to teleport to the battle arena. He then kills Amelia before resurrecting her and cursing her into a hybrid race. Meanwhile, Misa continues to use Spirit's power to heal Shayla. But soon Lei came and tried to stop her, even though Misa insisted on being able to heal Shayla. Unfortunately, Misa could only hold on for a short while and immediately fainted from exerting all her strength. Apparently Lei tried to stop Misa because she might die after all her strength was drained. At that time, Shayla woke up and advised Lei to live according to his wishes and desires. The next day, the final round of the sword competition took place and Anos would face Lei. Before the match, the tournament committee gave Lei a bracelet to help him absorb all of Anos' magic power. But Lei remembered his mother's words so that he lived as he wished. For that, he decided to injure himself to keep their fight even and he managed to cut off Anos' hand. Even though his magic power is sucked in, Anos is still stronger. He even easily stabbed Lei and became the winner of the tournament. But suddenly, Melhaze took Anos and Lei into another dimension. After meeting Anos, it is also revealed that someone brainwashed Melhaze and turned him into an opponent for Anos. In this dimension, Melhaze brought Gaios and Edol to defeat Anos. But before the fight can start, Lei suddenly lives and immediately defeats Gaios and Edol first. Apparently, Anos' previous stab freed Lei from contract magic, and when Melhaze found out, he took Shayla as a hostage. This situation made Anos and Lei unable to move against Melhaze. That's when Shayla turned into her true form, which turned out to be a magic sword. Lei then used the sword to defeat Melhaze, but Melhaze's magic power turned around and destroyed the sword. On the other hand, Anos' magic power was actually almost exhausted because it was previously sucked in Lei's bracelet. At this time, it was revealed that because Anos had just reincarnated, his strength had only returned by 10%. At that time, he forced another core strength point in himself and took out Venice de Noah's sword to stab Melhaze. The brainwashing previously given to Melhaze vanished, along with Venice de Noah's stab and Melhaze again realized that Anos was the Demon King. Then, Anos orders Melhaze to revive Gaios and Edol. It was then that Anos saw that Gaios and Edol's roots had been engulfed in Avo's magic, which made these two elder demon emperors not recognize Anos. Anos tried to restore the root of Gaios and Edol, but suddenly Avos came and destroyed the root of them both. Before Anos could attack, Avos had already fled and Anos didn't even try to chase him. Instead, Anos again orders Melhaze to revive Gaios and Edol, and after that, they return to their current dimension. Anos finally managed to win the competition. Moments later, Anos heals Lei and also revives Shayla. As a reward for his victory, Shasa gave Anos a sword and a kiss in front of the tournament audience. The scene changes to a flashback of 2000 years ago in the city of Garadite in the human realm where Anos came with his army to meet Hiro Kanon. The royal troops greeted Anos' arrival, who thought that Anos would start a new war. But Anos said he came to invite Kanon to come to Delzigate and discuss a plan. Unexpectedly at that time, the figure of a man from the human race named Jerga who was Kanon's teacher attacked Anos. Jerga has a great grudge against the demon race due to the death of his wife and child. Anos easily countered the attack, who then said that the human race also killed his mother in the past. The scene moves back to the present, where the Demon King Academy will have a student exchange with Hero Academy Arklaniska in the human realm. While training before the competition at Hero Academy Arklaniska, Anos gave Shin's sword to Lei. Unfortunately, Lei still can't remember about the sword. Because Anos had previously cursed Amelia, 
their class had a substitute teacher who gave a condition that they find the fastest route to the Hero Academy to enter the competition. Hearing that condition, Anos immediately used teleportation magic to bring his team to Arklaniska in the blink of an eye. Arriving at Arklaniska, they all scattered. Nisha and Misa intend to show Unitarian the route to Hero Academy while Lei will go around the city. Anos and Sasha finally went to Hero Academy first, intending to find the reincarnation of Hero Kanon. They meet Eliana or Bianca, a third-year female student at Hero Academy who then takes them on tour. Based on Eleanor's story about the history of the human race in the human realm, the demon king they knew was also named Avos Delhavia. Anos then asked if Hero Kanon was reincarnated in this era, and Eleanor replied that Hero Kanon was actually killed by humans 2,000 years ago. At night, there is a festival in the human realm, and Anos and his friends also come. Lei and Misa go on a date at the festival, where Lei gives her Miss Hence's necklace. Apparently, the necklace is not just any necklace, but a sign that a man proposes to a girl to be his wife. Long story short, a competition began between Demon King Academy and Hero Academy. Team Rivestaini, a third-year male student from the noble race, represents the Demon King Academy. Unfortunately, the Rivest team was easily defeated by the Hero Academy team. However, it wasn't long before it was revealed that the Hero Academy team had cheated by using holy water which could cause extreme pain to the demon race. So the Rivest team finally lost. This irritated Anos, and he used his power to remove the holy water used by the Hero Academy team and then challenged them to a fight. In the battle, it was revealed that Lei could not only use swords from the demon race but also swords from the human race. In short, the Anos team managed to win and even defeated two students from the Hero Academy team who were said to be the reincarnation of Hero Kanon. After his team lost, a female student from the Hero Academy team named Zeshia Bianca suddenly appeared and exploded her root in front of Anos, intending to kill him. But of course, this didn't affect Anos, even when Zeshia repeatedly blew herself up. When Anos was getting bored and stopped Zeshia's actions, Anos unexpectedly heard Eleonor's voice from deep inside her heart. Eleonor's voice asked Anos to come to a temple under the lake, where he would be able to stop Zeshia. Anos orders Misha to go to the temple while he seals Zeshia's root. At the shrine, Misha meets the head of the Hero Academy, Diego Kanana Jessica. Diego tortured Misha until she almost died, but fortunately Anos came and tortured Diego back. After healing Misha, Anos meets Eleonor in the temple, where he sees thousands of black bubbles. The bubble apparently contains Zeshia's root and it is also revealed that Eleonor is not a human but a magical entity that can create roots, so that no matter how many times Anos kills Zeshia or Diego, Eleonor will be able to create their clones through the roots she created. Eleonor apparently comes from the root of Jerga, who still holds a grudge and intends to exterminate the demon race. At that time, Eleonor begged Anos to kill her so that she too could be free from the evil influence of Jerga root, but Anos refused. Unexpectedly, Avos Dilhavia appeared in the temple with three elder demon emperors. Avos' arrival was apparently to retrieve Hero Kanon's Evans mana sword, and what was even more surprising, he was able to take the sword and carry it away. As a reminder, Evans' mana is the only sword in the world that Anos cannot use or take. Then Avos left the temple to declare war between the demon races and humans. He felt that there was nothing to be afraid of, because Evans' mana which was originally intended as a sword that would kill all demons was currently on him. Anos couldn't let the war happen and tried to stop Avos along with his team. On the other hand, as they were heading toward the battlefield, Lei asked Misa for half of Miss Hence's necklace, which was a sign of farewell. The war began. The Anos team tried to restrain the Avos troops from attacking the human race. Meanwhile, the elder demon emperors who were on Anos' side were asked to confront the three elder demon emperors who were on Avos' side. Lei suddenly disappeared in the middle of the fight, which made their team members think he was dead. But Anos believed that Lei would not die that easily so he continued to fight while searching for Avos' whereabouts. In the end, Anos manages to find Avos and confronts him. As they fought, Avos attacked Anos with the sword Evans' mana. It was then that Anos realized that Avos was actually Lei, who was the reincarnation of Hero Kanon. Anos realized this when he found half of Miss Hence's necklace that Lei had previously requested from Misa. Avos then revealed that he disguised himself as a fake demon king so that Anos would not be hunted by the human race. The reason is that until now the human race still hates the demon race because of Jerga's provocation. The hatred will only end after the demon king is completely annihilated. For that, Lei disguised himself as Avos, a demon king so that the human race could kill him, and then the grudge would disappear. But Anos didn't want Lei to sacrifice his life for his sake, and for that he let Lei stab him with the Evans mana sword. 
Anos used the remnants of his strength to change his appearance to Avos and asked the demon race troops to stop attacking. It was clear that Anos was doing this to launch Lei's plan, so that the human grudge would disappear. It was just that in that plan, Anos let himself be killed. After that, he really died. Unfortunately, even though Anos was destroyed and died, Diego who was a spirit from Jerga did not let the human race troops retreat. Instead, he ordered them to destroy the entire demon race. So Lei finally turned to attack Diego, who eventually turned back into the spirit of Jerga that grew like a giant with the name Sacred Magic. Circumstances that are increasingly cornered make Sasha and Misha unite themselves into a woman named Aisha. Even so, Jerga's power with Sacred Magic was still unmatched. Jerga mobilized 10,000 Zeshia to explode in the demon race army. But before the explosion occurred, Anos stopped the explosion. Anos apparently managed to rise again after awakening the root within him. Anos and Lei combine their powers and defeat Jerga. When Jerga died, Anos gave him a magic necklace that allowed him to unite with the spirits of his wife and children. Jerga died peacefully. After that, Anos used Venus to know a sword to change Eleanor's magic that originally belonged to Jerga into his own, so that Eleanor can live freely. The war was over, and the human and demon races finally recognized Anos as the real Demon King. The misfit of Demon King Academy ends with Misha, Sasha, and Eleanor coming to Anos' house to meet Isabella and Gusta. Anos's parents misunderstood the three women as potential wives of Anos. The moral of this anime is that revenge will not bring peace but only more war. It is often better for us to let go of something to live in peace than to hold grudges.